Good afternoon. My name is Cecilia Marietti and welcome to AAC Fostering Emergent Writing. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is one o'clock, so we're going to begin. Before we get started, um, I do want to make a note about documentation. There is an ASHA bubble sheet that is required if you use the registry. Please make sure to include today's date. You should see your point one credits on the ASHA website within six to eight weeks. For those who are not interested in ASHA CEU, a certificate will be sent to all attendees at the end of the session. To receive your point one credits, please keep in mind that you have to be available um, and in attendance of the whole webinar. In terms of materials for today's training, we do include um, an AAC Fostering Emergent Writing Outline and Notes page. Um, so while you will not be receiving the slides, it does summarize the key points in each section. It includes links to the resources, as well as a place for you to take notes next to the content. Um, and the final page will include references for today's training that I hope you all check out. So if you have not downloaded the handout, I hope you take an opportunity to do so either now or after the training. This presentation will focus exclusively on Saltillo products and applications. Um, we will not be specifically um, talking a lot about our products, but we will be referring to Saltillo um, items as we are discussing implementation today. I do need to disclose that I am an employee owner of Saltillo. Please keep in mind that if you do not have a Saltillo product, that um, we will be talking about modeling as a general strategy. And just keep in mind that the products and communication boards features are featured are exclusively from Saltillo. Just so you know a little bit about me, um, I was an intervention specialist in schools. I worked with special ed children for about 10 years. I found that a real love for working with nonverbal individuals, which is what brought me to Saltillo. I've been with Saltillo for seven years. I did think that when I made the switch that I would miss teaching, but to be honest with you, I'm, I'm pretty in love with this company and I haven't really looked back um, into the classroom. So um, I love working for Saltillo. Also, I am a mom of three pretty cute kids, in my opinion, Lucy, Henry, and Leo. They keep us um, pretty busy in this household. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. I want us to dive into the agenda today. Um, to help you plan for the next one hour, here's what we aim to cover. We will start with a review of what typical literacy development looks like. We will use this foundation to help us understand what we can do to help foster literacy for those who are using AAC. Aimed with this, we will look at three specific things we can do to support literacy. These will include um, providing access to the AAC system, engaging in reading, and engaging in early writing. So while this webinar focuses on writing, when we discuss literacy, if we only teach parts of literacy, then students will only learn parts. In the emergent view of literacy, literacy is learned through the interaction with and exposure to all aspects of literacy i.e. listening, speaking AAC, reading, and writing. So let's get started. What is literacy? I want you to tap into what you know about literacy. I'm just going to give you a moment to silently reflect what literacy means to you. So literacy is so many different things. As a teacher and a mom, literacy has always had a special place in my heart. And the reason for that is the incredible value that it brings. It is central to so much of what we do. Teaching literacy really is one of the most empowering and functional things we can do for someone. Without the ability to read and or write, how could you learn? How could you run your house, shop, connect with others, be a productive citizen, work, engage in social media, text, participate in today's session, Literacy gives people the opportunity to increase others' perceptions of them. It reduces barriers imposed by others, and it facilitates inclusion across many environments. Teaching literacy is the single most important thing you can do for individuals who use AAC. 
So close your eyes. Imagine you cannot read or write. How does that impact your life? Could you work? Could you help your family? Could you eat out at a restaurant? Could you get money from an ATM? How would you feel about yourself? What we know is that 90% of people who use AAC enter adulthood without acquiring functional literacy skills. The term functional literacy as employed by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization Institute for Statistics is a level of reading, writing and calculation skills sufficient to function in the particular community in which an individual lives. So what does that mean? By the time someone using AAC enters adulthood, he or she does not have the skills sufficient to fully participate in society. Often people might say that they haven't taught literacy because they are working on functional skills or early language skills first, but it seems like participating in society is pretty functional to me. Research shows that individuals with a wide range of disabilities, ages, and AAC systems can learn to read and write without access to speech. So we're just gonna keep that in mind as we move forward. Let's set the stage. Um, we place an emphasis on the developmental approach because it is important to understand the long journey of acquiring these rich skills that will prepare learners to read and write. First, we know that literacy does not happen in a vacuum. Copenhaver et al. reminds us that reading and writing, speaking, or in this case, augmented communicating, and listening abilities develop concurrently and interrelatedly rather than sequentially. Second, we know that literacy is a continuum that starts at birth or perhaps before. Think about a mom who is reading to her baby in utero. Since we know it is a continuum, we can imagine that there are different stages or milestones along that continuum. The focus for the training today is going to be in that first stage, often known as the pre-reading or early literacy stage. Charles' six stages of reading development offers a sample framework to show skills that a child will acquire in those first six years of life. We certainly wouldn't expect a one-year-old to retell a story or paint or print his or her own name. So how do we get to that part? We are focusing on emerging literacy to be the reading and writing behaviors that proceed and develop into conventional literacy. And we really got this definition from Jane Farrell. This picture offers a bird's eye view of what of that literacy stage from two months to five years. So think about how the baby is participating in literacy development. How is the three-year-old participating? And how about the five-year-old? If emergent literacy does not look like traditional reading and writing, what does it look like? I'm, we're going to watch a couple of clips of three-year-olds who are in the middle of that pre-reading or early literacy stage. Let's take a look at this first clip. So think about what that young girl was doing. What would we call this if it was a 14 year old doing the same thing? Did anyone think about stimming? Let's look at this next early writing video. Zoe, what did you write? Oh. You write an O. Yeah. Wow, good job. What else did you write? Um. Okay. So think about what Zoe was doing. Could she read her own writing? If an eight-year-old was doing the same thing, what would we say about her literacy skills? Oh, she just scribbles on the page, or no, she doesn't have any literacy skills. Remember, scribbling has meaning, and it is one of the first things children learn to read. It's their own writing. So literacy is learned through observation of and interaction with others. So parents, siblings, and with reading materials. And I think this piece is so important. Literacy is learned through active engagement with their whole world. Okay, so you might feel like that was overkill, but if you do not appreciate and understand how typical literacy develops, you cannot begin to foster it with someone using AAC. Let's take a look at how literacy grows and figure out how we might start to foster literacy for those individuals who use AAC. 
We talked about the continuum of literacy learning. We can talk about this as moving from emerging to conventional to advanced. Working backwards here, let's look at advanced skills. They may include things like reading with fluency, reading comprehension, and reading for learning a variety of topics, genres, and types. Conventional literacy skills may include book vocabulary, blending sight words, decoding, and encoding. Emerging literacy skills, specifically writing, is what we are talking about today. David Copenhaver and Karen Erickson offer some considerations for determining whether or not someone falls in this emerging category. So think about someone you work with. Ask yourself, does Johnny know all his letters? Does he actively engage in shared reading? Does he have a consistent means of communication and or interaction? Does he understand that writing involves letters or words? If you answered yes to two or more of these questions, your student is ready for conventional literacy. This is not the focus of today's training, so maybe there is another person you want to keep in mind. If you answered no to the majority of these, and the person with whom you are working is in an emergent literacy stage, that is the person about whom we are talking about today. So let's look at the three concrete steps to start fostering emergent literacy with AAC. First up, providing an access to an AAC system. People need to be active participants in the literacy process. If they cannot communicate in some way, they cannot be active. What the AAC system looks like will be different, but you need something. So think about the type of AAC system the person with whom you're working is using. These could include low-tech communication boards, so maybe a core or book-specific board. It could include a speech-generated device, picture cards, maybe word cards, labels, or signs and gestures. We want to make sure that your system has core language. So what is core vocabulary? Core vocabulary are messages and words that are frequently used by many individuals across many contexts. This vocabulary typically consists of functor words such as is, was, he, she, common nouns, pronouns, and primary verbs. Core words are developmentally appropriate, so it's vocabulary that could perhaps be telegraphic. It's environmentally appropriate, vocabulary that can be used in a variety of situations, and it's pragmatically appropriate. So we're really not just talking about wants and needs. They have the ability to describe and comment. Core words also have a high utility for a variety of communicative behaviors. Sentences and phrases allow for speed and communication process. So they should be a part of any vocabulary set. However, core words allow for flexibility and novel generation. They can be combined to increase semantic and syntactic complexity. They allow for expression of a variety of communicative functions. It has consistent location of vocabulary. It overlaps with academic core vocabulary and literacy. It's useful across many contexts, and it supports literacy. It has an overlap with sight words. And essentially, everybody uses core language. My core language is the exact same core language as yours. And it allows for novel generation in a variety of settings. So when we look at the Dolch Free Primer first 40 words with the Word Power 60 Basic, we find that 19 out of 40 of the words, so approximately 50%, are on the home page. If your child is an emergent reader or just beginning to obtain a sight word vocabulary, these words are our ideal starting point. Almost half of these words are among the most used words for students in grades kindergarten through second grade. In addition, about a third of all written material is comprised of about 25 words. So it is important to understand how core is represented on the AAC system you're using. Just so you are aware, we offer word power files created by Nancy Inman that range from 20 buttons to 140 buttons. So on Saltillo products, you can see core language in our Nova Chat devices, our Chat Fusion device, and our Touch Chat app. So think about, um, does your child or student currently have access to core language? It's important that you know what that person has access to with regards to core, and if needed, it's important to supplement with low tech. So if you are aware that core language is present, 
I want you to think about how it's organized. And if they do not have access to core language, think about how you can add core to his or her system. All right, the next step in fostering emergent literacy is to engage in shared reading. Additionally, it's important to make that reading available. So what is shared reading? Shared reading is exactly what it sounds like. It is the time for sharing a story and reading together, as well as the time of teaching beginning reading concepts in a safe and fun environment. What better way to practice something new than doing so within a context that is familiar and comfortable, such as reading books? Shared reading has been long recommended as a rich context to support the language development of children who are pre-literate or who have an emergent literacy skills. They are predictable and repetitive. Book reading is an activity that may take place regularly in the home. It minimizes other motor skills and it's just fun. We're going to take a look at what shared reading might look like with AAC. Here. Oval. Mommy wants to Oval. read you a book. Oval. Can we read our book? Can we read? Red. Can we read? Read a book? Red, my book. Can we read a book? Oh, what's this book about? So bugs? Is it about animals? Oh, here, look. Oh, I see a kitten. A little kitty cat. Yeah. And a dog. That's right. Look. Dog. That's a doggy. Dog. That's a doggy. Dog. A frog. Fish. And a fish. Where's the fish? Here. Where's the fish? Oh. I don't know. Ah. There it is. There it is. The fishy. I see a fish. Petty. Oh, pet. Can you pet the fish? Zoe, pet. Yeah. Can you pet the fish? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, pet that. How about pet that fish? Yeah. Yeah. Pet the fish. Yeah. Fish. Fish. Hunter. Oh, fish. fish. Pet fish. Hunter. Fish. 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 That's right. Fish. Cat. Where's the cat? Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, ah, uh, 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 I see, I see a cat. You know what that kitty cat says? Listen, kitty cat says, cat. So the kitty cat says, meow, meow. That's right, meow, that's a kitty cat. Shared reading is a wonderful place to start, especially one-on-one. -on -one. If you're interested in learning more about modeling during reading activities, um, please check out our recorded webinar on putting aided language into practice. Uh, it's an excellent webinar and it really um, delves more into modeling and reading. That is not the focus um, of today's discussion. Copenhaver and Yoder identify that children with disabilities often have fewer opportunities to practice than their peers. If they do practice, they tend to be more passive participants. Since we know that reading volume is the prime contributor to vocabulary growth, then we know that individuals who use AAC are getting less reading volume and thus less opportunities to grow vocabulary. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. So we have to start making reading available to these children. Um, just so you are aware, Kim, um, the lovely Kim Gallant has added the link for the webinar I just mentioned, putting aided language input into practice. So if you are interested, it is in the chat window. So while we were not able to discuss reading in a, for a very long period, since we only have an hour today, um, we are going to move on to engaging in writing. So let's talk about what early writing really looks like. As we talk about this, think about where your child or student is on this continuum. So is early writing exploring writing tools? It includes random scribbling, scribbling with letter-like forms, 
drawing simple pictures that have meaning to a child, using print to make signs or labels, using many letter-like forms, using written words, spelling phonetically or conventionally, and the process of learning that writing is talk that is written down. It is important that we keep this developmental perspective in mind. We wouldn't expect a nine-month-old or even a two-year-old to be doing either of these things. Yet, do we expect a 12-year-old to do these? What if that 12-year-old is mouthing writing utensils or is scribbling? Is this appropriate? And what would this activity most likely look like if we did it with this child? Hand over hand? Something to think about. The next video we're going to look at is um, actually a video of my daughter practicing these pre-writing skills. Um, it really makes the point that there are no prerequisites to writing. What else? What else are we taking? What else do we need from the grocery store? Garbage bags. Can you write that down, please? And what was the last thing I said? Paper towel. Can you, can you write that down? Can I see your list? We have everything we need. So Lucy is a great example of those pre-writing skills, and she is can read her own writing. So why is this early writing time so important for literacy development? Well, because it builds confidence. It fosters interest in letters, reading, and writing, and it really does lay the foundation for reading and writing later on in life. Imagine your children's or students who have missed this stage. Is it a wonder that he or she cannot read or is not interested in writing? So let's think back to the earlier discussion about typical literacy development. Why do children learn to write? Because they see other people do it and they want to convey meaning. And it's important to note what writing looks like today. It still includes a pen and paper, but it also comes in the form of texting on a phone or typing on a computer, um, you know, seeing a mom write a recipe or a grocery list. So what do you need to do to foster literacy with AAC? Give them exposure to writing. Teach that writing has meaning and build that foundation for all later writing. What we know is that written language activity should not be withheld until the child has mastered talking or walking. Remember when we said reading, writing, talking, and listening all happen together? Yet we know this doesn't happen for children who use AAC. So how can you foster emergent literacy? We want to engage them in early writing activities, keeping in mind that developmental perspective. One way children learn to read is by writing, and for struggling children, their own writing is sometimes the first thing that they can read. So in getting started, we need to have something to write on or something to write with or have something to write about. Think about how your students are currently writing. And think about how do we expose children who are one to three to writing before they can hold a pencil. Developed by Hanser at the Center for Literacy and Disability Studies, an alternative pencil is defined as anything that provides a student with access to all 26 letters of the alphabet. There are full day trainings about this implementation strategy, so please note that we will, what we will do today is really just touching the surface to get you thinking about it. This is appropriate for anyone who cannot hold a traditional writing material or manipulate a standard keyboard. Writing with alternate pencils allows students with significant disabilities to develop beginning writing skills by supporting them to go through the same developmental writing phases typically developing students do. So for every student, we need to find a pencil they can easily use. So think about how do we expose children who are one to three to writing before they can hold a pencil? What could we use for an alternative pencil? We could use magnetic letters, alphabet stamps, letter stickers, flip chart, a keyboard in AAC or words in their AAC system, a computer keyboard, a talking word processor, or an eye gaze frame with the alphabet. Um, you can really check out the alternative pencil Weebly uh, for more ideas and information, and this link is included in your handout. We're going to take a look at um, a couple of 
examples of alternate pencils. The first video is a three-year-old who cannot write her name um, with holding her pencil, but she can find the letters on the keyboard. And the second video is from the Alternative Pencil Weebly. Um, there are a lot of these on YouTube if you simply search Alternative Pencil. Watch what this teacher does and think about if you have or have had a student who might be at a similar stage in literacy development. Um, keep in mind this video is a little long, but um, the reason why I let it play to the end is because I think it's really powerful when she so shows the student um, what he's written.
Um, so as you can tell from that video, the teacher was giving letters of the alphabet to write with, um, and she assigned meeting and identified the letter name and sound um, and matched it to her book. So while that video is a little long, I think it's valuable because it shows that not write, every writing activity um, can be as seamless as we would like, and the teacher could have abandoned the experience midway, but she continued to expose that student to writing um, and then show him what he wrote. Another alternate pencil um, is available in the NovaChat devices, and that's our save document, um, which allows you to save um, some written word. We're going to watch a video that shows save message as a writing tool. Um, we're gonna jump forward from this little boy to working with a child who's still in the emergent stage of literacy. This is Kendall, she is 10 years old and has had her NovaChat for several years. At the end of every speech session, she engages in this writing activity to share with mom what she did in therapy um, during the day. So we're gonna take a look at this video. Okay, and press the photo that you want to replace. Oh, okay. You like it? Good job. Okay, now we're ready to write our sentence. What do you want to tell your mom and dad about what we did today? We read that book. Uh huh. Okay. All right, build your sentence. Uh, Hold on, you just erased I. Do you want I at the beginning of your sentence? No? The toilet? You want to talk about with the cat in the toilet? Yeah? Uh, do you want to say the cat got in the toilet? Okay. All right, find your animal. Cat. And what the cat do? Well, hold on. Let's have a word before toilets. Go back home. The cat. Yeah. And it go in the toilet, right? It went in. Okay, now you can go find your toilet. Uh-huh, yeah. Go back to groups. That's okay. All right, we're going to go to hygiene because we do all that stuff in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then toilets up at the top. Toilet. All right, put on your period, and let's go save your okay, sentence. Okay, save your sentence and go back to groups. Uh -huh. Oh, but did it match that picture? Let's try it again. Save your message again. It's okay. We'll just have it in there twice. Good. There you go. <laughs> I think your mom will like that sentence. Good job, Kendall. Okay. Okay, she's done. Yep, you're all done. Good job. I think that's an excellent example of um, writing with AAC. Um, so when Kendall gets home from school, she can now show her mom um, where to go to help Kendall tell mom about her therapy news. Um, let's talk a little bit more about that save message feature. 
It is important to note that Save Message is just a tool. So how you use it is where the teaching and learning has hap um, happens. Um, this is an example from another client. It's a screenshot from a device of a five-year-old boy with CP, and his team was wanting to incorporate writing goals into his IEP. So there is a video online that demonstrates this in action, and this link is included on your handout. Um, you can also download a written step-by-step -step instruction guide to saving message with stories and scripts. Now, the second tool the SLP used with Kendall is called Take Photo Button Action. That is what allowed Kendall to take a picture of the thing she wanted to talk about. In this case, the picture of her cat craft. Um, here's another example of a five-year-old boy who, with the help of his communication partner, took a picture of one of his beloved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle coloring sheets. I'm um, using that take photo button action. And then he used the save message feature to write about it. So as I mentioned, your handout does include a link to a video to demonstrate how to set this up. So once you have established an alternative pencil that the child can use, the next step is creating opportunities. Let's start by brainstorming different activities you do to engage other children in writing. So perhaps you have a student um, sign in and out of school, or you can write a journal entry in response to a daily question, making a Christmas or a birthday list, sign a name on thank you cards, compose emails or text messages, make classroom signs or write books, make grocery or to-do lists. You could write text for a remnant book or write comic strip captions or sign up for daily jobs. Whatever that opportunity is, just make sure that it is a meaningful opportunity and that it's age appropriate. Once you have writing happening, you can fine tune it by providing instructional feedback. So you can think of this like shaping their writing into meaning, giving your students instruction through your feedback after their writing. Think about the two earlier videos of the typical three-year-old and the young boy using the magnetic letters. The things that the mom and the teacher were saying were instructional feedback. So this could include things like, wow, you wrote an O, or I can write an O too, just like you. Listen to the communication partners around older children who are still in these early literacy stages. My guess would be you do not hear this kind of feedback as the child mouths the objects or scribbles on the paper, draws simple shapes, or throws the letter across the room. We do this with typical literacy development, so we need to start doing it with children who are using AAC too. Okay, so now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about a structured approach that is sure to provide your students with lots of opportunities to write and you lots of opportunities to provide instructional feedback. Gretchen Hanser OT developed this idea of predictable chart writing based on work by Cunningham, Hall, and Williams. Predictable chart writing is a fun and easy shared writing activity that supports emergent and conventional writers and readers. It's a way of providing some structure while allowing students to generate their own ideas. Your handout provides more detailed information about predictable chart writing. My goal today is really to provide you with an introduction to it so you can get intrigued to learn more. So we're gonna start with an overview. There are five steps of predictable chart writing. In step one, the teacher and students work together to compose the chart with each student contributing at least one idea. In step two, the class practices reading the chart and looking for specific elements. In step three, students are given a sentence strip with their contribution printed on it. First, they cut the sentence into individual words and then they reassemble the words into the complete sentence. In step four, students collaborate to create sentences during a game called Be the Sentence. And in step five, the class creates a book using the sentences from the chart. Depending on the skills of the student, each step can be completed on a separate day or several steps can be combined into a single session. So we're gonna go over each step in depth. It is very important that you get a solid foundation for the rest of your predictable chart writing activities. This starts with selecting a topic and then deciding on a sentence frame prompt. The topic can match whatever the class is currently using. So for today, we will keep things simple with the topic of favorite colors. Write the title with the students to demonstrate how to write for real reasons. Great, now that we have a sentence prompt, this is similar to a sentence starter. Um, we will typically want one that will encourage the use of core words as an answer. So we're trying to elicit the response of like adjectives or verbs. 
and also one that can be answered using the child's AAC system. So what, let's go with I like. Another important part is that while we may use symbols to help students answer, we will only write words. The focus is really on print. So now that we have a topic and a sentence starter, now it's time to write our chart together. We don't wanna write the stem ahead of time. It is really important for the students to see you writing the sentence starter. And anytime you can model the sentence before or after chart writing is an important component. One format that could be helpful for you is the I do, we do, you do format. So for I do, the teacher or other models language or models writing, we do is a time where we could think aloud as you explore vocabulary and write down words. So we're gonna give choices using the device. And you do offers a time for students to choose their own words or letters. The second step of predictable chart writing is to reread the chart, talk about it, and analyze it for a few carefully selected text elements. The primary goal of this step is to help students focus on specific aspects of the text. Depending on a student's abilities, the goals of the step may be different. So for students who are emergent readers and writers, the focus could be on print awareness. This could include teaching students that print carries meaning and developing concepts of sentences, words, and letters. Conventional readers and writers will have repeated practice reading high frequency words in the context of real sentences, and students who, not, and students who do not yet recognize letters and words will have repeated opportunities to start developing those understandings in the context of meaningful print-based interactions. So we wanna start this important step by rereading the chart while emphasizing the repetition of the sentence frame and modeling what a fluent reading of the text sounds like. Next, we're gonna read the chart again while encouraging the students to read along. Many teachers have found that their students are more engaged if they clap or chant or wrap the words while reading, while others have students using single message voice output devices to read the repeated frame. You wanna reread the sentences like a poem. The focus should really be on fact practicing fluency and making sure that you are flexible with the goals of rereading the chart. So it's important that your strategies reflect your students' current goals, and this can change and should change over time. During step three, students work with sentence strips. For this step, the adults create two sentence strips for each student with their individual sentence. You're gonna give the student one of his or her sentence strips while you keep the other. And I'll let you think about why you might wanna have two sentence strips. Ask the student to read the sentence, providing support as needed. Then ask the student to cut his or her sentence into individual words. If you have students who are unable to cut the sentence independently, you can run your finger across the sentence strip and have the student indicate using a gesture, a vocalization, perhaps a switch, where they would like to cut. It's really important to avoid drawing lines or making dots or otherwise cueing students regarding where they should cut. The whole point of cutting the sentence into individual words is to help the students develop concept of word and begin to recognize the place where one word ends and another begins. Keep tape handy for this step. Um, students may cut in the middle of words, so when you compare your sentence strip to the student's sentence strip, you can talk about the spaces in between words. Tape the student's strip back together and ask them to cut the sentence into individual words again. I mean, this could take several attempts to get it right, but please don't get frustrated. Give the students the time they need to figure it out by doing it. And after the sentence is cut into individual words, ask the students to arrange their words to recreate their sentence. Once they finish, read the words in the order the student arranged them. In this example, if a person arranged the words blue like I, I would ask them, did that sound right? And then read the sentence as it should appear and reread the words in the order the student created. We might also show them the completed sentence and ask the student, does your sentence look like mine? We want to help the student compare and contrast the words in his or her effort with the words in their appropriate order on the sentence strip. After comparing and contrasting, we want to remove the model and ask the student to try again. It is important that you remove your sentence strip so it does not become a simple copying activity. Keep trying and use each effort as a chance to give the student feedback and provide important experience attending to word order. We're going to take a look at um, what cutting the sentence looks like. Uh, 
Good. Cutting in between each word all by yourself. You have to get that period. There you go. <gasps> Rock star. Oh. What's that? E-O-L-I-M-I-T. Moment. Dominic. Stop. Don't cut it apart. So that's one name or one word. Okay, stop. I'll take them. Take them. Moving on to the next step, the fourth step of predictable chart writing is to play a game called Be the Sentence. During this activity, you will write the words from each sentence on a full-size sheet of paper. It is only necessary to write the words from the sentence frame once. Make sure to print each word with a large, thick marker in font that is large enough for students to see the, from the front of the class. And we want to pass out the words from a single sentence and have the students with words come to the front of the room to construct the sentence. Encourage the students in the audience to guide the other students as they rearrange themselves to create the sentence. Each time the group indicates that the sentence is ready, read the sentence the way the group arranged it. Compare their sentence to the actual sentence on the chart and, keep, and work to get students to recognize the left to right orientation and specific order of the words while emphasizing what sounds right and makes sense. For students who use augmentative and alternative communication, you can use a single message switch to produce the word that he or she will be using during the game. And when working with students who have their own device, make sure the words from the sentence are on the device and you know where those words are located. Um, we're going to take a look at another video from Laura in Illinois. And she learned about predictable chart writing and decided to use it as a framework for her small group and or individual therapy sessions for her students using AAC. She realized how easily she can incorporate her language goals into pre predictable chart writing. Note that this video does not follow the typical rules of Be the Sentence, but it's still an example of a valuable writing activity. Um, as I mentioned before, this step is generally done with multiple students as they arrange themselves to form the sentence in front of a whole classroom. Okay, Dominic, we're gonna use our vehicles. We're going to use our vehicles in our sentence. Can we find the first word of your sentence? I don't like snakes. Can you show me that first word? I. 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 What's the second word? As I mentioned, while that doesn't follow the normal structure of be the sentence, I think it's a still a great example of a valuable writing activity. The final step of predictable chart writing is to make a class book. First, you should let your students select an image that reflects their sentences. This can be done using magazines, photographs, or images from the internet. This is an important step when making the book because it provides students the opportunity to show ownership and make their own connection to the writing. For example, what you might think of friendship might not match the same image a student has in mind. So next, we'll help the students glue the words from their sentence strips onto the page. You're gonna write the sentence or type it to add to the page. You might also work with the students to make the book using Tar Heel Reader 
or other computer or internet based bookmaking tools. Step five is a really important component of predictable chart writing because it results in a permanent record of student work. Often, written work is on a chart, computer, or whiteboard where it doesn't get saved. Having a book provide an artifact that students can return to over and over again um, is really important. These books have additional meaning to students because they reflect individual students and the, as the class as a whole. Um, frequently, predictable chart writing books become a classroom favorite. So once again, um, we're going to watch another video with Laura. Although this does not follow the exact structure of predictable chart writing, simply by using this as a framework, she creates meaningful opportunities to both model and encourage literacy and language. So the No Snakes video, um, which is about what you're about to see, is a perfect example of this. So I will let you take a look at it. So you can see how excited Dominic was to write his own sign, and you can see, you know, the pride they had when they were reading their own work. So I love that video. What are you going to do? Why am I not surprised? So we're nearing the end of our presentation today, and um, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about exploring letters, letter sounds, and phonological awareness. Please note that this is where we may, may start to merge into the conventional literacy stage. So we're really only scratching the surface with this one. There have been several studies um, that have investigated the effects of instruction and acquisition of letter sound correspondences by individuals who have complex communication needs. What these found were that individuals of various ages and range of disabilities using AAC can indeed acquire letter sound correspondence. The length to acquire this, of course, varies depending on a range of different internal and external factors. Based on these studies, there were also some suggestions to consider when working with this population. We want to teach one letter sound at a time, and it's important to teach letter sounds first and letter names later. So Light and McNaughton proposed that letter names may actually interfere with the decoding um, process rather than help it. So if a child looks at the word and recalls its letter name, not the sound, then he or she will have difficulty decoding the word. Letter names can be taught later, but the initial focus should be on the sound. Um, Light and McNaughton also proposed the following order for introducing letter sounds. We want to 
have lowercase more frequent, um, teach lowercase first because they're more frequent in text, and we more frequently occurring letters taught first. We want to separate sounds that are visually or orally similar, and short vowels um, should be taught before long because words with short vowels tend to follow decoding skills. Um, so how do we teach it? And essentially, it really is the same way um, you teach phonics, similarly to how you need an alternative pencil for children who may not be able to hold a pencil, you may need an alternate way for a child to make sounds if he or she is unable to do so. One possible option for this is the use of a phonics keyboard. Um, there are also phonemic hand signs, apps, or even a single message switch with the sound might be an appropriate starting point for a child. So if you're not familiar with our phonics um, keyboard, it is available in the WordPower 60 basic file under beginning keyboard, and it's a really valuable tool when teaching phonics. Next, you need meaningful activities to provide the child with lots of opportunities to hear and say the sound. You typically start with the sound in isolation and then move to the initial sound of words. Some examples of activities include sound boxes, sound songs, sound hunts, sound games. You could even combine the sound hunt with the remnant book, um, or you could use predictable chart writing to make a sound book or find the target sounds in your writing. So Pinterest or Teachers Pay Teacher are a wonderful resource for, resource for this. For alternative access, you may need to involve some switch activated toys or single messages on a button or customized pages. Here's one example from Dr. Pamela Hart where the child will walk the dog to the different letters and words that start with a given sound. We're going to watch um, a little video on how someone could explore um, a letter with a device. Look, you're coloring things that start with the letter H, because the hamster starts with the letter H, and air balloon H starts with an H. Let's see what else. Oh, look, let me see what's down here. Uh, hair. H starts with the letter H. And heart. H starts with the letter H. See, I can find heart starts with the letter H. Can you find heart? Uh, look, and at the beginning of that word is the letter. Go ahead, you can push it. Let's listen. Heart. Heart has the letter H heart at the beginning of it. And the letter H makes the sound. The letter H makes the sound. That's right. Let's see if there are any words that start with the letter H. Can you find the letter H on there for me? Go ahead. Yeah, let me see. So I think you guys get the idea. Um, I want to follow up finally with the resource of the AAC Language Lab. It's a compilation of information on language development gathered from a vast number of resources. It looks at language um, states and provides guidance for selecting language activities that are a good fit with your child's current skills and encourages progression in language development. So this specific slide shows an example of the exploration of the word family AT. And um, the word family books allow students to generalize the word families. And the language lab provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to work with these materials. So if you've not heard of the language lab, there are free resources available as well as paid resources, but I do urge you um, to check it out. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. So, um, you know, Kim has been kind enough to man the chat window. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to include them there. Um, as I mentioned, uh, if you're ready to learn more, there is a lot more available on our website. So consultant supports available, product and implementation webinars. Oops, I don't know. 
I'm sorry, that slide kind of jumped. Um, but please feel free to look at our website. Um, please don't forget to complete your bubble sheet if you are registered um, with the registry. And you are welcome to contact me if you have any questions about resources. While I am the consultant for Ohio, I'm also happy to connect you with your regional consultant. So I appreciate the time that you've given us today to learn more about literacy and writing. And um, I hope you enjoyed the content for today. So with that, I will um, end the seminar and I thank you.